as the book emphasizes, the reactions to Churchill's speeches were much more complicated than we generally assume. It wasn't the case that everybody unanimously went crazy about them. In fact, people often felt depressed in reaction to the speeches, which was quite logical considering that Churchill was often conveying very bad military news. Now, we shouldn't necessarily assume that people feeling depressed was what we might call a bad reaction. We all think that the speeches were, had the effect of uh, inspiring people. This, was, this is the, the classic story that we're always told. And in fact, they often brought people down. And so an example of this would be the fact that Churchill was frequently and absolutely correctly emphasizing that the war was going to last a very long time. And it wasn't clear exactly how the end of it would be brought about. And so in 1941, for example, where after Churchill has gone to Washington in the aftermath of Pearl Harbor and addresses the US Congress, in that crucial speech, he makes references to making plans for our operations in 1943. Now, back in Britain, a lot of people say, 1943, the war's gonna last till 1943. This is terrible because there was actually a very widespread assumption that in some way Hitler and his armies were suddenly going to collapse and the war would be over very quickly. And so when people were told that it was likely to drag on for years, they were naturally very depressed. Now, in fact, that was quite a good reaction in some ways because the fact that Churchill consistently emphasized this meant that towards the end of the war, in the summer of 1944, when he was then actually able to say, we think the war is going to be, able, is, is going to be over soon, people did then believe him. They say that he hasn't fobbed us off with false promises in the past. Actually, he seems to be sort of speaking the truth, that he, he'd established his character as, as a reliable orator through this process of, of actually giving very depressing, uh, hard-headed news. But I think that the lesson for people who are trying to communicate important things is not to focus on how you could come up with a phrase as good as the ones that Churchill made repeatedly during the summer of 1940, you know, to obsess about uh, getting exactly the right uh, sort of soundbite or quotation. What you should concentrate on is giving people meaningful information and trying to put it in a context in which they can understand. And that, in fact, not the famous phrases, was the true secret of Churchill's rhetorical success.